Insulin is a master regulator of metabolism. Too much of this hormone is a bad thing. Too little of this hormone is a bad thing. It is a razor thin edge of control of the coolest hormone in your body. Before its discovery in 1922, if you had excess urination, excess thirst, and you were losing weight, that trifecta was practically a death sentence. That almost always meant that their body had stopped making insulin and there was no treatment. You might extend life by a few months with a super low calorie diet that had no carbohydrates and almost all fat. The Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1923 to Banting, Best, and McLeod started on one of the best discoveries in medicine that teaches all about metabolism. You see, insulin decides whether a cell is going to be in a famine or a feast. Those patients with no insulin have high blood sugars, but their cells are actually starving. Without the insulin, the glucose stays outside the cell, which turns that cell inward looking for anything to break down the nutrients and keep the cell alive. In healthy patients who are fasting and go without food for 36 or 48 hours, you'll see their insulin lower. And a few hours later, that cell is using autophagy, a very similar process to what was happening in those type 1 diabetics. The cell is scrounging and looking for any micronutrients that's not being used to sweep up and use as energy. If those patients fast for longer and longer, or in the case of those with type 1 diabetes who are without insulin for very long periods of time, they break down muscle and find any way to feed the cells out of the nutrients in their body. Eventually, patients without insulin die because of starvation at a cellular level. In healthy patients, as they break their fast or eat for the first time in the day, the glucose rises and insulin is the commander that will get that fuel inside the cells to fuel their mitochondria. Insulin has a different message for different cells. It tells fat cells to take up free fatty acids or triglycerides. It tells your liver cells to be the first responders in your body when you eat by taking up glucose, turning that glucose into energy, and even putting a little storage away for the hours after you eat. It does a very similar thing to muscle cells. And I would say insulin's biggest cell that it targets is your muscle. Those muscle cells are in heaven when insulin commands glucose to go inside the cell. Specifically, insulin signals a very special receptor called a GLUT4 receptor to go out of the cytosol and bridge over the cell membrane. Once that GLUT4 receptor parks over the cell membrane, it's like an open floodgate for glucose to enter those muscle cells. And they do it quickly. A little extra glucose, and once again, it turns it into glycogen to store it for later. As long as that GLUT4 receptor is parked over the cell membrane, glucose passively enters into your muscle cells until you have too much insulin. Yes, let's talk about too much insulin. How does it happen? It happens from overeating, and especially the overeating of carbs of small particle sizes. Said another way, the overeating of processed foods. Overeating those foods causes the glucose to rise, which causes the insulin to rise. And insulin does what it does. It fills your fat cells with fat, it fills your liver cells with glucose, and it fills all your muscle cells with glucose. With every one of those cells stuffed to the brim with energy, the cells become resistant. Let's talk specifically about that muscle cell. That GLUT4 receptor that used to bridge over the cell membrane, it stops listening to insulin and sinks back into the cytosol. So now glucose can't get back into the muscle cell. This is a disaster. This causes that glucose to not be able to enter into the largest storage tank in our body, our muscles. With a blunted entrance into the muscle cells, the glucose in the blood rises. And of course, that causes more insulin to rise. Yeah, that chemistry set of high blood sugars, high insulin, and empty muscle cells is called insulin resistance. This chronic high level of insulin is what gives insulin its bad name. You see, high insulin for too long acts like a growth factor. It stimulates things to grow that shouldn't. This is where insulin is linked to that increased risk of a heart attack, increased risk of stroke, increased risk of cancer, and skin takes, and obesity, and diabetes, and eye disease, and kidney disease, and the list goes on. 
In order to reverse that, you've got to get the cells listening to insulin again, which means quit stimulating the production of insulin. The other nasty thing that insulin does happens inside your fat cells. Those fat cells that store fat are signaled by insulin. And with excess insulin, it starts to put anything fatty into that fat cell and that includes several of your fat-based hormones. You'll find an increasing deposit of those fat-based hormones in your fat cells or bound to proteins where they don't belong. This lowers your testosterone and estrogen and vitamin D and cortisol and any of the other fat-based hormones. This insulin resistance problem is quite a nightmare. So do you wanna know if you're insulin resistant? Check out this video. I'll see you there.